J-O-N, play me some pimp and then we'll jump in in maybe a minute or two. This sounds like some shit you could be earning your leisure to right here, don't it? Yeah. Name? Don't that sound like some shit? Like some <laughs> celebratory shit. You just bought championship, a building. Championship trophy. <laughs> <laughs> I just bought the projects that I grew up in. <laughs> Let's celebrate. I think Manny Fresh said some shit like that in a, in a song. He was like, oh, I want to just blow up and buy the St. Bernard Projects yeah. and make it one big crib. Yeah. Tell everybody that's where Manny Fresh yeah. lives. Yeah. You remember that's that shit? shit. <laughs> that's that shit. New Orleans, that's that New Orleans. That's that shit. I just saw Manny, man. Man, he was Yeah, Houston. I need him on the show. That's a fact. I need him on the show. I know a couple people. You got to call somebody. A few yeah, I call somebody. Yeah, Fino, you seen him? Huh? Yeah, Fino. You was there when they had Fino? I'm gonna call Fino and see what Fino gonna, gonna say. I gotta give me an X on there. Yeah, see that Fino? Yeah. Coming up. <laughs> yeah, we bringing everybody, man. That's dope. Well, not necessarily here, but I mean, you know. That's dope. She got yeah. stories. Yeah. yeah. We about to move. I'm gonna tell you to bring on. You got you a new spot? Yeah, Chad. They bought a building. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 said that. Yeah. Buying buildings and shit. The whole shit. Yeah. Fencing all. That's next level. I'm gonna set up my studio right now. Do it. Trap house studio. All you need is is a corner. That's it. I need Pyrex dishes in that bitch. Triple beans, <laughs> baking soda. We talking about stocks behind that kind of shit. I mean, whatever you need to do, do it. Just do it. Just don't take long. Like no, if no, you no. just do it all at once. Yeah, I'm getting don't busy. Don't be bullshit. No, I'm it. coming to get busy. Get up, get up in there early. Whip up. Let that shit it's out of there. I watch the two best podcasts. Y'all and them. Exactly. Oh, I don't know how to put it together. Speaking of podcasts, <laughs> welcome back to another episode of rendition Christmas special. <laughs> Black History <laughs> Moment. Soul Train Award. <laughs> BT Award. Hip Hop Award. I don't even, man. I'm just gonna let that sit right there for a sec. Jay Wayne, stop the celebratory music, please. I don't want people to be thinking we're celebrating without them. But it is a very monumentous. Is that a word? <laughs> it is now. It's a monumentous. I feel like my nigga DC would love that word if he was here right now. It's a monumentous. <laughs> Moment. Yo, he need a drop. <laughs> <laughs> it's a monumentous moment right now. I got my guys in here that's gonna come drop some game, like they always do, because they out here making people lives better. They are telling you how to go from zero to a hundred real quick. They are helping you put your life together financially, even if they not. I'm telling you, they are, because they dropping <laughs> so many gems everywhere you see them, bro. And they always in the right spirits. And they're always in the right mindset. And these are just motherfuckers I just love to be around because they always bring so much positivity and knowledge. And I believe damn near everything they say because the voices <laughs> that they speak in are so common and soothing. These are my guys right here in the trap with me today. Are you Leisha? What's yeah, up? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't even know if that's how people introduce y'all, but I feel like y'all such a strong duo yeah, that nah, that's, that's, that's the movement that's right now. Fact, that's man. the name. It's the brand. That's a fact. Tell them, man. Tell them who we are. Yeah, I'm, I'm Rashad. This I'm from Rashad. Detroit from Earn Your Leisure. So Come on. Earn Your Leisure is a movement that we started like roughly two years ago. Today, today, today. Today, today. Yeah, 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 yeah. Put the music. Celebratory music, please. <laughs> Somebody get the celebration music. Uh, I tell you, run upstairs to grab the liquor. <laughs> Even if we don't drink the liquor, I want the liquor around. <laughs> Go grab the liquor. Go grab me some liquor. More bottles. More, more, bottles. Bottles. more yeah, bottles. Bring some bottles. More bottles. Bring some. Bring the liquor. Bring the liquor, the liquor, bring the liquor down. <laughs> bring the liquor down. Cue, cue the liquor. Br cue the liquor. <laughs> two years, for yeah, real. Yeah, two years two to the years day, ago. man. So it's one of these things, man. We just started a financial literacy platform to talk about finance and investing in a language that. When you did it, guess what it was? Monumentous. <laughs> a monumentous moment. Merch yeah. that. We got to put it on merch. Yes. That's monumentous. That's monumentous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we've been rocking and rolling ever since. It's a platform where we talk about investing and real estate and all of that. And I think it, it just caught so much traction because, you know, for a long time, people were left out of that conversation. Like, you know, the average person might not be watching CNBC or watching, listening to Bloomberg, but 
they check us out because we speak how they speak, we dress how they dress, and it's like, oh, this is actually something that I can actually do. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not as complicated as, I, as they made it seem. So, um, you know, we, we obviously work with great people like our brother Wall Street Trapper. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> before, I get caught, before she get too real, I also got my other partner straight out the end on you, hear me? You hear me? Wall Street Trapper. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I fuck with this nigga right here. <laughs> Super solid. That's my nigga. That's, That's my guy. That's our guy. Right sure, there, man. Sure. sure. I ain't mean to cut you off, <laughs> but you was flowing and shit. But yeah, you know. nah, so that's, that's really what it is. It's a financial literacy platform. Started as an Instagram page before we even had a podcast, and we had a podcast. Now we got a podcast network, online university, all kinds of stuff. So Yeah. Congratulations yeah. on yeah, that. Appreciate man. you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yeah, started in our din my dining room. Facts. And to the world, man, it's crazy. Like, we tell people the story, Who man. y'all eating at night? Well, he's Jamaican, so you know <laughs> yeah. his mom's cooking curry Chicken. Yeah, we, we eat curry goat, we eat jerk chicken, we eat every, anything that you could think of a West Indian household, right. we eat that. But yeah, man, we uh, Coconut start bread. And shit. <laughs> Coconut <laughs> bread. Oxtails. Yeah, definitely all that. All and, those and the first time we met you, you was talking about, um, that you saw a clip on Instagram about trucking. trucking. Yep, Shout trucking. out to Alex. Um, and you was like, yo, I used to drive a truck. I and did. We did the numbers. And then the next time we met you, you were talking about Robinhood and your stocks and all of that. So, yeah. so I like, I don't that's be, why you be I on the low. Yeah, 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 you're on the low. I want motherfuckers to think I ain't got shit going on. I, ain't, I don't look like this. I don't discuss none of the happy shit. The people that fuck with me, they ain't going to understand that. But that's exactly why I wanted to bring y'all back on here, man, because it's like y'all have reached another plateau of success. And it's still some niggas who ain't caught on. Yeah, so yeah. this is kind of like the makeup test. It's a, it's still a few that y'all ain't reached yet. Yeah. I know because they ain't, they ain't, they've been they've been sleeping yeah. and not watching the show like that. Because we done went to another plateau. We done mm, did so much shit. Congratulations. Yeah. We done picked up a lot of new hanger owners and people who trying to figure out what the game is. So it's like, we want to reintroduce some of this G shit to them. Yeah. We want everybody to have the same opportunity. Mm. That's like, a well, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> Somebody, that was like, we asked the other day, who should we have on? A lot of people said, earn your leisure. Like, you need to watch the first one. That's how you know. <laughs> Fact, man. But that, that's how it is, man. And. and we believe in that, like, it, uh, nobody's going to check it out before it's their time, right? Like, we can spit the message out, we can put it on YouTube, we can put it on IG, but until somebody physically and mentally has a mindset to listen, right. it won't be time for them to listen anyway. So, when they hear it and it's their time, they can gravitate toward it, take the knowledge and execute. You see what I was saying? How calm this nigga voice is. <laughs> 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 nah, I used to talk to, I was a teacher for like 13 years so so it only makes sense that you're doing what you're doing yeah it's kind of crazy the way that it worked out like shy he's a financial advisor i was teaching i'm an educator so it was like all right bet let's put those two things Boy, together real dangerous minds type five <laughs> let me ask you this shot when did you get good with the money i mean I you always, know what i mean when i say I, when, you, when did you get good with the money so you know i had hoop dreams growing up okay so i thought i was going to be you know in the league so i always loved business I never wanted to work for anybody. I never had a real job my whole entire life. Don't so, get one. That shit is a setup. Not, not on my to-do list. So when I was, you know, playing basketball, like a lot of people, and, um, you know, I was fortunate to go to college, D1 and all of that, and um, I tried my hand overseas, and that didn't work out. So I'm like, all right, I got to figure something out. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. I, I'm, it's crunch time now. Yeah, basically, I got a communications Back degree. So it's not like I'm going to be a doctor or a lawyer. Like, you know what I'm saying? from a state school. So I came back and I started a commission job as a financial advisor. You pretty much can get hired because it's commission, it's all commission. 90% of people's not gonna make it. But me, I never, I looked at it like I didn't really have an alternative not to make it. Right. So I just learned as much as I possibly could. And it was crazy, like I said, it's a real dangerous minds type of vibe because he was teaching in the Bronx and um, he like, yo, can you, can you, um, I never understood why he wanted to be a teacher. To me, that's like an inmate Damn. breaking into jail. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly what you like, said. You know what yeah. He's like, yo, you spent your whole life going to school to go back. What's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> Every day. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. exactly. So I was like, yo, shit, you might be right. So he like, yo, come teach, come teach financial sense. literacy to these kids. And I go there and I felt like I was in jail. Like you had to go through the metal detector. The walls is blue. You can't leave the school. It's just like yeah. Yeah, you got to sign yeah. in. And I'm like, yo, this isn't an environment. How you gonna expect these kids to like? They got bars on the windows. You can't you can't leave the school, and not only can you, you're looking at bars when you're looking out the window. Down to so, the paint, yeah, the paint. But it was so inspirational because it's like I'm thinking these kids don't care about stocks, none of that. 
but they was eating it up, like learning, like what's Bitcoin? Oh, black children love money. Yeah, 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 money. yeah. They love money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like once they got a, the hang of it, we did, we we started a, a, a every summer for six weeks. We had a program to teach kids. It was his program. I, t- I kept taught financial literacy, and they was just like in competitions with each other. Like <clears throat> it was amazing to see them actually catch on to that. Those children are rich right now. Yeah, all of those kids are successful <laughs> as hell right now. <laughs> yeah, and then that that kind of just birthed where we are now. So financial literacy is like that's my background. Finance, his background, is education. Yeah. You know, I help with teaching him a little about business. He taught me how to actually teach. It's a lot harder yeah. than it looks, like yeah. you know what I'm saying? You go in there trying to get these kids' attention. Yeah, They're 14, 15 years old. It's not that easy. With their own problems and weed in their <laughs> pocket. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Yeah. But the, the common denominator was money. Because yeah. at the end of the program, we was going to pay him like $500 for so six weeks of, of internships. That's better than a stimulus pack. They, well, that is, like, they got 600 right? These kids worked for six weeks and got 500 And so it was their first time they, they was going to encounter money. So I was like, bet, if it's the first time at 14, 15, they're going to have any money, Yo, let's tell them what they could actually do with it instead yeah. of just saying, yo, it's back to school, let me get some J's. Like, yo, could you start a babysitting service? Like, they had to come up with business plans and create their own things. And actually, like, if it was good, we almost treated it like Shark Tank. It was like, yo, if it's that great, yo, let's try to help them pursue this um, even further. So, yeah, it was dope, man. So when did you get good with the money? When I get, uh, when he started teaching me more about it, man. I'll, I'll be honest with you, man. I didn't value money um, the way I should have. I didn't really understand it. It was like, it wasn't taught in my household, right? Like. West Indian background, finances weren't even talked in the household. And so like getting credit cards and, and actually getting paid from jobs, like it was like you get it, you spend it. And then um, just watch, learning more from him and learning more from all, some of our friends, it was like, all right, I got a better understanding on my own, but I had to learn some things. So like, yeah, I ran up my credit card. I had to go default and have a payment plan on it. I was get, accumulating student, student loans at the time. So it was like all these things were happening these big financial decisions and I was like, damn, this is crazy. And so I sat down and was like, all right, I gotta map my life out. Like I'm about to start a career in teaching. I gotta figure this out. And so like he his first client, the first thing he did was like, yo, I need you to be my first client. And I'm like, yo, it's my brother. Of course, I'm gonna be your first client. And so he was my I'm his first client and so he became my financial advisor. Which is like it's kind of crazy, but like that's how life worked for us. It was like, yo, I need you to do this, do this, do this. How was he as a financial advisor? Was he calling you like, my nigga, you ain't talking? <laughs> nah, the meeting, the meeting was crazy. He was like, yo, I need you to pull up to the office, and I'm like, yo, alright, bro. And I pull up, and there's him and his pops, and he's like, yo, uh, I said, how should we do this? Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's like, nah, just sit in the chair, man. You be alright. And then they started talking to me. I'm like, yo, this is kind of crazy, but I know in my mind, like, they set me up for my future, like. At 25 years old, I'm getting life insurance. Like, that's right. not even something I even thought about before that moment. And so I'm like, yo, this is really crazy. And it's, it's dope because it was like, yo, he didn't, this is his first trial, right? Like, he, he ain't have anybody else to practice on. Like, he's in the game now. And so it was dope to watch him be there and to have his pops there, like, guiding him and to watch him gain clients and get referrals. It was like, all right, he's always going to have his first client, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's dope. <laughs> yeah. That's dope, man. When would you say you got good with the money, Wall Street? After I came home from prison. Yeah. So, you know, I did the 10-year stretch. That's why I learned about stocks at in prison. So, like, I came home, and I was just like, yo, we got to do something else with this shit. You know what I'm saying? This shit going to keep going. I can't keep beating the system. Um, so I used to really invest a portion of my re-up money in the, in the stock market. And I was, like, telling my homies that, and they were like, man, he's like, you tripping. I'm like, nah, you know what I'm saying? So then... Um, I caught my, I caught a charge, and that shit like broke me. Right, so I had to just like get it out of the mud again. How did them stocks do when you was locked up? Well, I ain't get, it was after I got locked up. So when I caught the charge, I still had bread in there. So I didn't want to touch it. So right. I was like, all right, let me get out the mud. Those dudes told when I was in prison, he was just like, let that shit shit for the long term. Like that's how wealthy people get rich. Like it's not an overnight game. So everything I did in the streets was just quick. You know what I'm saying? Like we need the money right now. And then he was just like, if you, don't, if you let the money work for you over time, it's going to buy back everything you want. And so one of the biggest problems everybody I knew had was, man, they ain't had no money. And everybody who I knew was working, they still ain't had no money. So, like, that wasn't a, like, I was like, all right, that shit ain't really even adding up. Can't like get that. no money at work, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, Can't get no money yeah. at work, son. Yeah. so that wasn't really adding up for It's going to be a chapter in my book. <laughs> Can't get no money at work. Nah, That'd be the name of the book. Like, you yeah, broke because of you your work. job. Yeah, nah, that's a title. <laughs> 
No, that's, that's a fact. The title. Your they job keep you your broke. Job. Your job yeah. give you just enough to get back to that motherfucker. That's it. That's it. And even if you work two jobs, you're just selling more of your time. Man. I ain't never met nobody working two jobs that was doing better than somebody working one job. Bro. You're just selling more of your time. Bro, that's a fact. You know Bro, what I'm saying? These niggas going to go crazy <laughs> when they see four black men sitting there talking about how you don't need no fucking job. That's a fact. Yeah. They just going to be like, see, them niggas just want to work. They lazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, nah, but that's the real shit, though, nah, man. It. A lot of niggas don't even understand. You probably would be better off if you quit that motherfucker. You just quit it. And you just Cause you're gonna be forced to figure shit you're out, figure it out real quick. You gotta figure yeah. it out. So I was just like, all right, cool. But then my back got put against the wall, cause you know one thing that, when you get locked up, like one thing that happened. So after I did it ten years, I came home, I got back in the streets. That's what I knew, even though I knew about the stock market, right? But like still, it's like Tyson said, man. Like everybody got a plan till they get punched in the mouth. You know what I'm saying? So the world just punched me in my mouth. Like nobody ain't come home, and no, nobody ain't give me no bread, nobody ain't give me none. So I just got back to doing what I knew how to do. But that shit, you're going to always get jammed up again. Nobody can't beat the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't beat the game. It's right. just when it's your turn. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, all right. So when I got jammed up the second time, when they kicked my door, and I was like, shit, I'm broke. So I just started, you know, I started robbing and shit. I started robbing dope boys. Like, fuck it. You know, I don't yeah. know shit about <laughs> You know. No, man, man, you know, man. I don't you know. know. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's my plan, too. You know how we get down. Come, yeah, on, man. Man. Come on, man. We're in a chat. Fuck, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, shit, I did you what you know. Yeah. Yeah, so what you do? Get another job? Yeah. No, I start robbing it. I start robbing it. Fuck wow. it. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> So I was just like, fuck it, like they can't, you know, they can't go to people on me. It, it was, I was just ready for that, you know what right, I'm saying? Right, right, so right. started using that, and I was like, all right, yo, like this shit ain't it. We almost got jammed up, me and my homie, God bless you. So right. and I was like, all right, yo, this, we gotta change some shit around, you know what I'm saying? So I started really taking this shit like real serious. Like, all right, dude told me this shit gonna work. I saw that shit working for him. Like, let me just, I ain't got nothing else, you know what I'm saying? Let me just go all in on this shit. And so, you know, it was a struggle. I lost money in the beginning, because you know, you, you gonna lose what you don't understand, but that shit build up like a tolerance for you. Right, one of the things people hate to do is take L's, but you need the L's to turn them bitches into W's. You know what I'm saying? You need them. So I was like, all right, cool. So I just learned that shit, and I was like, all right, cool. So when I started, as a matter of fact, I built the Falcon Stadium, you hear me? So I was like, all right, I'm gonna just invest 70% of my money. I'm gonna just live like, like I ain't got shit. You know what I'm saying? So I just started investing all my money, and I just started seeing that shit work for me. And I was like, ah, this that shit right here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I started telling my homies, like, we was wasting a lot of money, you know, just buying a lot of designer shit. And I was be like, look, I ain't trying to tell you don't buy the shit, but you gonna own the shit too. You know what I'm saying? So they was like, man, what you talking about? I'm like, look, like you wearing them finish, you wearing them little batons, like that shit on the stock market. You drinking Hennessy every day, like own that shit. If you gonna go to the club, we gonna stand on the sofas, you gonna buy the bottles of him, fuck, own that shit, that shit different. You gonna buy your girl the Gucci bag, own that shit, that shit different. You wear dickies, you wear Louis Vuittons, you wear Vans, like that shit owned by a company called VSC. If you wear dickies, you wear Vans, you wear Tim's, like own that shit, and that shit gonna make you feel different. That shit just started making me feel different, cause we don't know what ownership is. Right, everybody get bread and they just teach you how to spend that shit. Nobody don't teach you how to make that shit, make shit for you. See, that's where he come in. Yeah, my guy, <laughs> my guy. And that's when I met them. When I met them, that's how my shit started. Like I was on a roll, but then I learned a lot from them. You know what I'm saying? Just how to put my shit together, how to structure my shit the right way. You know what I'm saying? That's my guys for sure. They, like, they helped me, the Wall Street Trapper brand transition because I fuck with them so hard. You know that's why saying? I'm just about to let them talk. I ain't even <laughs> <laughs> just say some shit. I'm, I'm listening, bro. <laughs> whatever the fuck y'all want. Because this is money talk right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, whatever yeah. the fuck y'all feel yeah, like yeah. talking about. Go ahead. So check this out, Rashad. I'll so be listening this. to the place. So check this out, Rashad. Yeah, you, know <laughs> you can't get no money talking all the time, yeah. bro. If y'all gonna come in here and tell me how to get some more paper, I'm listening. That's a now, fact. I mean, I think that even for, for you guys, like, you know what I'm saying? People, they watch y'all and, you know what I'm saying, they love y'all. You're like, y'all fan base is crazy loyal. I hope they watching the level up. Happening because it's like the plays. No, 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 I won't be telling you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro, we are broke. We are broke ass comedians. Look at that couch. It's the same couch we've been in. Don't you know, I remember you. You always want to talk to numbers and shit. Shut your ass up. Keep me out of this. Let's take y'all for example. See, we're looking at y'all for example. <laughs> no, 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 no. Talk to Wall Street, man. <laughs> man. My baby mama watched this shit, man. Yeah, yeah. That's a fact. <laughs> uh, that's one liability right there. <laughs> that's a f- now, look, that's dope, too. That's Check this out. You're talking about your, you know what I'm saying, your kid's mama. So one of the things I actually 
And heavy. I wasn't, because she gonna hit his back. <laughs> what you say about me? <laughs> that boy did say you said something about me. That yeah, was what Travis guy said. Yeah, so Travis y'all said. niggas is terrible. Y'all turning into liabilities. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta keep better company. Nah, nah. <laughs> Rappers that come on here and don't start all this shit, y'all be starting. Yeah. God, damn. But one of the things I be talking to them about, one of them heavy about is like making sure our kids be good. You know what I'm saying? Like if we got to get out the mud, if I had to go through all that shit, I don't want my little one to go through that shit, right? So I started investing for my daughter when she mm. was two. You know what I'm saying? So now we done built that account up. She thought to be five. We done built that shit up. So the goal for me is to make her a millionaire before she 18. And I don't do nothing, but that's incremental investing. Start the custodial account, start mm-hmm. the UGME account. You know what I'm saying? Put that money in there every time you get paid. So now when your kid get older, you already give them that leverage in life instead of starting behind the eight ball and instead of having to, you know what I'm saying, get it out the mud and start to have to help mom out. You can be yeah. a kid. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, put them, up, yeah. put, put, put them on game early. And right. So now that shit becomes this is, a habit. All right, this is the question. Talk I'm going to ask it. all three of y'all. Yeah. What would you tell a person right now with no money, I'm talking about zero, they, they starting at nothing. Right. They just got a, a wish and a dream. All right. Real shit. Real shit. Real shit. What, you, what would you tell them? You the financial advisor. We're going to pass this around. It starts with education. Okay. Mm-hmm. Before you even have money, you got to prepare to have money, right? There so you go. So it's like, for me, education, I was just telling Troy, because I've been anti-school my whole time. To- Entire life, like you know what I'm saying. Not that I didn't like to learn, I just didn't like how they was teaching me. And Troy, he was a teacher, so you know we always wrote back and forth. So now I think a couple weeks ago, I'm like, yo, bro, you realize how bogus this whole education thing was? Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, nah, you're right, because it's like this ain't real. What they yeah. teaching you ain't real. Like yeah. the money, people printing money with machines during a pandemic. Six trillion. And they got nothing to do with education. Like, you go in the bank, they're not asking for your college degree. They're not asking for your high school diploma. They're not asking for none of that. They're asking for how much credit you score, mm-hmm. how much how money much you, you want. That's it. <laughs> so it's like when we start to learn the other side of the game, we realize that everything that we really learned is really pointless. Yeah. Like Orion's belt, it ain't helping me get no money. Yeah, for that like, you know and all that. So, what, wait, what? What? Yeah, yeah, you, you missed that class. Yeah, you missed that part. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't teach me that in the bro. <laughs> Nah, it's real though. And what Trap was, what he said was like, yo, if he got it out the mud, there's no reason his daughter should. And so we gotta start thinking like that, right? Like, well, you know what I'm saying? If if we look at our business, and if we hire our children as employees, that's an, another way to raise income for them, right? So the max that you can do is like twelve thousand six hundred, right? So my kid is seven years old. If I did twelve six the max, which can't be taxed, right? If he's by the time he's seventeen, he already got one hundred twenty five thousand. You see what I'm saying? And that changes the trajectory of his life. Because I don't know anybody. I doubt that we, you know anybody that at 16 had 120 to say, like, what do I want to do now? Right? College might not even be the option. It might be like, yo, I want to start my own business. But I, to back to what you said, like, if they had nothing, Shai said education. I say his mindset. Like, I, I have letters that I wrote to my parents that I was going to be a millionaire my whole life. I already thought it in my mind, right? I, said, I heard somebody say, like, yo, I've, I've been a millionaire. My bank account just didn't match it. Mm-hmm. Right? They ain't gonna have the money. Because <laughs> right? they think being broke is funny. You gotta right. be broke. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's the mindset. So I'm like, just bored to say, keep doing your thing. I'm, just, I'm sorry. I'm just, you gotta I'm have asking. a mindset like, yo, I'm gonna get there, I'm gonna get there, I'm gonna get there. And when you get there, you've been preparing for your whole life. You already know that you was gonna be here. So a now, point when the point is made. <laughs> Did you catch that? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yo, I, I've always prepared for this moment. I'm at this moment. What am I gonna do with this moment? You know what I mean? You just told them folks you're a millionaire. Don't even know it. <laughs> nah, nah, you're nah, fucking nah. up, bro. I they gonna go ask you. I, well, I already, I already said at eight years old, I already said I was. You know what I mean? So like I said, first it's the mindset. But the, even with that, we got to look at like growing up, we always look at like a million dollars, like Scrooge McDuck. Like you got a million dollars, you can just go swimming. You know, you know you're gonna need way more than a million to swim. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like you realize a million dollars is not really a lot of money until But you it was in coins too. With gold coins. Uh, gold coins. He should have had Bitcoin. <laughs> that would have been. He invented Bitcoin. <laughs> you remember when the shit came on? The nigga had so much money, he was running from it. It was like, look when they get to that part, I'm like, it's a hurricane. That nigga was running and the coins was trying to get him. You know what I mean? Yo, we need the duck pills drop right nah, there. That nigga used to jump in his money and go swimming every day. Nah, Uncle Scrooge, cool. give us a dollar. Fuck you! <laughs> nah, he's he's giving you nothing. He ain't top five. He, he was swimming in money. He had a whole vote. You know, yeah. you was, did you miss that part too? And he nah, dressed man. like nah, 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 nah. And he dressed like a whole motherfucking pimp <laughs> the whole time. 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 The wh
with a motherfucking <laughs> top hat with spats on his <laughs> duck feet, nigga. This was straight jazz musician. Cab Calloway type shit. Nigga had duck feet with spats on them, bro. If you don't know what spats is, that's the shit that go over your shoe to make that shit look like one. With the pocket watch. Come on, with the pocket watch. Get the pocket watch. Yo, it, it was, it was. Never gave nobody shit. This nigga had people working for him. And he would go around the world because he dropped four dollars in gold coins. <laughs> Uncle Scrooge took his team on some bullshit ass it. But, but that's but the, the, the message. Too, so. The yeah. message in that is he he Mr. stayed Burns. tight, so he ain't spent <laughs> he ain't spent a lot of his money. Who? The message in that. He ain't blow his shit. Now, Mr. Burns is bro. But see, you know I mean? Mr. Burns is blow his shit. You know, yeah, I fuck with the man. But shit. when you brought up Mr. Burns, that nah. nigga's got so much paper, he just hold his hands like this. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Burns is, he's like, you don't get the message in Mr. Burns. This nigga scrawny as hell because he don't pick up nothing but money. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Burns on a power plant. Yeah. Man. It's a whole different kind of money. Mm -hmm. Now, they just had a conversation with somebody who said, if you got a million dollars, you need to be stepping on eggshells. Mm hmm. Why? Mark Cuban, you ain't enough. Don't don't scare these people. <laughs> <laughs> this nah, is a let black that sink in. You know why you let that sink in? We, we have black that people sink watching this show. You're going to scare my in. niggas in the street That's like, the bro. problem. We scared of fucking money, bro. We scared of money, low. I ain't. Don't say we. You just said <laughs> you ain't got no money. You just said you ain't got no money. I ain't, I'm not All right scared then. Of but we scared of money. Let me tell you why. Not we. You get an average Some person. Folks. You get an average person six figures. They gonna blow that shit. You got to. That's why you need more than six. If you, <laughs> you get more than seven, that's why you need more than seven. <laughs> if you that's get a million, more than seven. if you get a million dollars, you spending that bitch. That's why you need more. So that's exactly. why. Exactly. So that's why he said if you got a million, that ain't yeah. enough. Oh, man. Ain't enough. But what if it's the other half? Like you, <laughs> the nigga, that, like what? That's what I'm saying. Some oh, niggas done what? spent a million, right? You that's done spent fact. that. Now you on your second half, and you're like, cool. all right, woo. That's cool. But how many people don't get that second chance? Man, how many people don't get that second run, nigga. I, you know how I many OGs I know? Like, well, you know what I used to be, nigga. What you used to be? <laughs> that's what you used to be. What you is? I don't want to hear them old stories no more, OG. nigga. No more stories. A lot of man. Come mm. on, come on, come on, low. Mm. Come on, low. That's why investing is important. Yeah. You get the mill, you make two more mill, then you blow the mill. Right. It's okay. It is okay. It's okay it's to blow. Right. I want you to have fun with it. But, but don't I want you to scare know how to these make people into thinking that they can't spend this nah, money. Nah, that's why even with me, like I brought, like when I brought this watch, right? Like, oh God. <laughs> when you bought it, <laughs> you brought it. Like, this this nigga said something. Like, he brought the watch. <laughs> nigga, when I brought the watch, what you went with? No, I'm just fucking. Nah, so when, yeah, so so you got the watch. I had to make a, an example. Like we still, this is our culture, hip hop. Like we grew up, like yeah. Man, yeah. But we gotta do everything responsibly. So that's why mm -hmm. when I made the video, that like, bitch on the camera, man, just flick yeah, it one time. Just flick that shit like because you didn't buy it for <laughs> nobody not to see it. So it's it's factory, factory diamonds. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying like we didn't. That's how you supposed to go. You didn't drill holes in it. None of that. It. This watch appreciates. Well, I appreciate over the course of time. Ric Flair had this watch 30 years ago. That one. Yeah. <laughs> that's a fact. That nigga done got so much money. He buying Ric Flair watch. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. Nah, so I'm saying like that nigga stunned on y'all. <laughs> it's, 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 it's an investment though. Yeah, I fuck I'm it saying up. it's an investment. So it's like we gotta show them, like we gotta relate to them the same way a rapper will relate to them. Not right. to actually make them feel bad about themselves or show off on them, but just let them know like this is what you're aspiring to. You mm -hmm. can still have fun. You can still buy nice things, but. Do it responsibly. This right. is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna you spend invest. your shit and have a plan with it. Because yeah, you right. can you can get your money, you can keep making money off the shit, like right. you said, and whatever you spend it on. Yeah. That's, but there's a lot, right? It's a gold watch, right? We know that gold appreciates over time, right? So he can pass that down to his kid when he's 30. His son can have that for years and pass it down. And so Don't give it to your son. <laughs> because I'm saying that's just so cliche. Leave it to your grandson. Right. right. So that's what I say. Make it, sure it, you it, secure two generations. Exactly. That's my thing right that now. That's just been so bummed. Think of all that granddad left us a Rolex, nigga. That's a fact. What if he left you that same money in stocks? What if he left you anything? I don't even know. I'm telling you. I ain't have it. You feel me? My and granddad left us some Making bills in the pocket. Making it normal, <laughs> <laughs> Making it normal <laughs> to leave your kids something. You know what I'm saying? Making it normal to leave your grandkids nah, something. Why, some bills and it was a pocket knife on there. <laughs> that's, why, that's why what we doing is so important. Hey, what's up? You know that credit card, the one you're scared to look at because you don't know the balance and you ain't really been keeping up with it? Check this out. It's this program called Upstart. You can go to it and they'll put all your credit card balances in one place and you can just make one 
payment. You don't have to keep worrying about multiple logins and trying to figure out what your password is. You can just go to upstart.com forward slash 85 south and use our code and get your account started so you can pay all your bills in one spot and then save yourself a whole bunch of time, energy, and money. Things you don't have to remember. You can get approved the same day and you can receive your funds as fast as one business day. With a five minute online rate check, you can see your rate up front. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided on your loan application. That's upstart.com. Go fill out your application. They got loans from $1,000 to $50,000. You already in the game right now because you're watching this commercial. So make sure you go to upstart.com forward slash 85 South Show so you can start rolling. Get the ball rolling, man. I don't know why you're wasting time doing it the other way. This is the future. That's upstart.com forward slash 85 South. Because when they see Wall Street Trapper, they see his struggle. They, they know he's from New Orleans. He First did 10 years all, in yeah. jail when he was 16 years old. So he speaks the lingo. You know what I'm saying? When they, when they see us, they, they know that we didn't go to Harvard. We're not the most polished as far as our diction is concerned. That's not stopping us from investing. Right. That's not stopping us from having intelligent conversations. You don't have to compromise. A lot of times growing up, you, you compromise your intelligence. Nobody wants to be the smartest person in the room. You're around a bunch of people that's talking about random nonsense. You feel uncomfortable speaking about anything that has any level of intelligence. You dumb down yourself. It happens all the time. But now it's like nobody also wants to be the dumbest person in the room. Mm -hmm. So if everybody's getting money. That'd be the person talking the loudest. The dumbest person? Yeah, stupid. Man. So if, every, <laughs> if, if, every, <laughs> if everybody's talking about something, now you want to actually elevate your conversation and it's okay to actually sound intelligent. It's yeah. okay to understand mm -hmm. money. It's not like, it doesn't make you a nerd. Yeah. It doesn't make you corny. Yeah. So when they see us, I think like, not just us, but our whole movement of financial literacy online, they like, oh, these are just regular people. They yeah. like us. Like if we can do it, why, why, why can't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody do it. Yeah, we make it no secret that we learn it as we go. And as we learn, we teach. That's, that's just the role. Like we're gonna learn and we're gonna teach as an obligation. So when you learn, you do the same thing. Um, and so like, if that cycle just continues, now you got a whole community of people that's educated and it challenges you, right? Like right. you don't want to be in that circle and you got you can't say anything because you don't know anything about the topic. And so like I'll tell you something, I learned about money. Ain't nobody gonna give you none. The bank will give you some, but they're gonna tax you. You see what? That's exactly <laughs> why I said ain't nobody giving you shit. So here's the thing about that. If you learn the language, then you know how to play the bank. You feel me? So in, in knowledge is gonna always be the fertilizer to your wealth. Right? Boy. <laughs> you fucking Nigga, if you fucking that. <laughs> Nigga. <laughs> I wish I could go to the commercial right now. It's supposed to be some Oscar Mayer after that motherfucker. You feel me? So the more you learn, man. I want to sit like yeah. this now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, Nigga, man. I think we on something. <laughs> yeah. Fuck that. Welcome to another episode of Earn Your 85 South Show. Right, <laughs> yeah, this is the paid portion of the show. Uh, broke people are not even allowed to see this part. <laughs> you must stop listening now. You mean, yeah, your screen will be blacked out right now. We know exactly what you have in your account. If you can still see this, that means you have some money. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Man, what are some of the some of the lessons that you learned just in life about money, like from your family? The big, so you know, some good and bad things. The like big, some shit that you grew up around that the, you know was the biggest lesson I learned just in my journey of understanding money is, the more you chase money, the more it's gonna run from you. And it's, it's like, like hoes, ain't it? Similar. <laughs> um, you gotta act like you ain't stuck in nah, shit. Yeah. When you don't want it, when you, you don't need it. Like, what's, what's wrong with me? You don't like money? Yeah, no, it's a fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. When you don't need it, that's when it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like when you, so, so it's like even coming from working class environments, like you said, that was crazy what you said. Anybody that works two jobs, they never really have any, you still never have any money. So it's like, yo, you we working 40 hours a week, overtime and all mm -hmm. this, and you still, you're in a race to go nowhere. Right. You don't still understand money. When you understand money, it's like, you, I'm on my phone. Right. 10 o'clock in the morning on the wake up, and money's coming in. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we understand we, st we started businesses, we got systems in place. So, to me, that's been the biggest life lesson is like, don't chase the money, chase your passion, chase mm -hmm. knowledge, chase information. The money's a byproduct of that, it's not a byproduct of work. You can't work to become rich. I, I'm just sitting back smiling. Yeah, I love how yeah, niggas talk this shit because it's so, it's like, 
Like you said, but once you're on the other side and you don't see it that way, you yeah. have to get a certain knowledge and a certain understanding of what, what you're speaking on right now. So it's like, the, the motherfuckers who got to go to work tomorrow, they might be sitting there like, man, they just sitting there talking <laughs> nah, shit. Nah, it's, it's real. It's real. Like, I, my, my partners are, are entrepreneurs. Like, so they watching me go to work. As we're even doing earning leisure, like, I'm going to work teaching. And I'm sitting there watching my phone. I'm watching kids. I'm watching my phone. You ain't watching I'm, them kids if you watch. Right, 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 exactly. You lying to yourself. Exactly. So I'm like, yo, what am I doing here? I'm watching somebody in Nigeria say, yo, that episode really changed my life. And I'm teaching a kid how to, to like, skip and hop. See? I use, like, what? what and I'm, I'm like, you quit your job. Not, and he told me to quit my job. And I'm like, yo, my purpose is bigger than this moment. Yeah. Right? So, like, and I, you said it, and it's the one bought yeah, the quote. Yeah. We was like, yo. Yo, if, if you don't make money while you sleep, you're going to work till you die. Work till you die. What was that moment where you knew you had to quit the job? It was uh, that moment. I was like, yo, where is my biggest impact, right? Because like, I was teaching phys ed. I'm like, yo, what's the ceiling for a phys ed teacher, right? Like, you get to be the athletic director somewhere. like The that's, football coach. You get the football coach, right? And it's like, yo, dog, that can't be life. And so, like, when we started to see the impact that the podcast was having, I was like, yo, rather than impacting this school or this school district, I could impact the world. I'm like, yo, I gotta go where I can impact the world. And so like, it was, it was a quick decision. And he been telling me that for like, what, five, 10 years? Like, yo, bro, I'm gonna get you out of there. You can't, you can't be teaching no more. Like, they waking up when they wanna wake up. I'm, at, I'm up at five o'clock in the morning. I'm like, lesson plan. With a, le- <laughs> with a <laughs> lesson plan. With a lesson plan. P.E. Lesson plan. P.E. Lesson plan. With the lesson plan. Killer carrier. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you was, you was a teacher teaching that. Uh, what, were you used to, what you used to listen to on the ride to school in the morning? I always wonder what the fuck teachers listen nah, to. No, I'm listening to that. Right? I'm listening. <laughs> Yo, what you listen to? Yo, what is that? Yo, that's crazy. <laughs> That's I'm crazy. Just saying, like as a as a black nah, teacher, yeah, I'm, was, listening, I'm listening to anything. I'm listening to uh, what was your teacher shit? Yeah, the I shit listen- where you was like, I'm finna teach today. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this shit got me hyped, boy. I'm, <laughs> boy, I've been hyped. Every, I'm, I'm lit till six period at least. <laughs> I don't even need no lunch today. It's chicken ten today. <laughs> Might just skip that. I don't. Oh, no. <laughs> That's part of it too. It's like I'm listening to whatever the kids are listening to. Right. So they keep you young. And it's like, yo, through that, I'm like, all right, I can learn something from that music. And when it's time to teach a lesson, I'm going to incorporate that. Right. And so it was like, yo, that's how you get financial literacy. So if 21 Savage is, t- is talking something about money, I'm going to know. If Uzi's talking about something that has to do with money, I know. And now when I go into a classroom, Bet, yo, you heard that new Uzi song? I like how you brought that 21 Savage up. Cause when that nigga dropped that line, he said, they the type of people that are standing in line for some free shit. Shout out to But you gotta know that, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Standing in line for some free shit. That's a fact. That's a boy. That's a, that's a fact. hard fact. There you go. That's a hard bar. But like, yo, if, if I don't listen to Maybe it, look I, at I'm people listening. Did. Exactly. Shit. That's, that's a, a hard, hard fact. That's a hard bar. <laughs> shit. Like Savage. It's hard. 21, 21, I'm 20. thinking about that one. That nigga said they the type of standing laugh for some free shit. I need him. I need to sit there so he can dissect that <laughs> shit. Never. That's a fact. You will never. Yeah, if you listen close enough, he be saying yeah, shit. Yeah, he be saying. So I think one of the things for me a lot of shit. Uh, just more important than that, that shit is, they print that shit every day. So it's enough for everybody. I think what happens too is when we grew up, like, we grew up with that scarcity mindset. Boy, I ain't got no money for that shit. You might gonna pay these bills. I ain't got no money for that. Put this on a level with. Right? So you, you people always trying to be like, hold on to it. Right? And I think if we have the mindset like that, that shit come to us, like you can attract that shit. You be around people. And I think that was one, one of the things I had to learn, and I learned that from them was like being in a conversation with people that's talking that stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you gotta believe that you, you gotta actually be you. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. so no, you, I think that's one of the things I'll tell somebody who don't have no bread. Like, get around people who got some bread. Get around some different kinds And don't ask them for none. Don't ask them for mm. nothing. Like, just go be around the conversation. That's a big one. That's a big, <laughs> That's one. A big one. I know yeah. so many people that have fucked up opportunities by asking for shit. Yeah. That's yeah. a fair yeah. Shut your ass. And them chill. people was just about, about to get you straight. You and then you showed them that yeah. you needed something. Yeah, yeah. real shit. And they like, well, we can't fuck yeah. with you because you out here hungry. Yeah. You think you'll do anything. <laughs> That's a fact. You yeah. will do anything. No, you're not loyal because you hungry. You will do anything. Starving. For some money. And yeah. that's why people always say, all money ain't good, good money. money. Because yeah. whatever, and I said, ain't nobody giving you shit. Yeah. Anytime you get something or you acquire something, some. something is required of you. 100%. Exactly. 100%. So, 100%. some motherfuckers gonna throw you some money just to fuck up shit. Yeah. 
Just to be like, so you're on. I wonder how much it would take for them niggas to kill each other. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fact. Oh, they arguing over that? Wow, I didn't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Were they broke? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you get around people who, you know, had them conversations. But it's just like, man, that shit crazy. Cause like we get, we come from a dangerous ass place in this life. Facts. You know people who have died for less. Man, if Way you less. was in them situations, like, whoa, don't fucking shoot me, nigga. You mad? I, I will give you twelve hundred dollars. You about to shoot <laughs> nah, me six? Don't shoot me for this six hundred dollars, bro. Nah. bro Take me to the crib. <laughs> don't shoot me. Oh, don't shoot me, bro. The bill, the bill gonna be sixty-eight thousand dollars. I promise. Thanks. Thanks. Nah, man, for real. Being around people that know how to have them conversations, man, that's different. And just hearing people talk about money in a different way, besides paying bills, right? Understanding like the things that you can do with money. Understanding the things you can do with credit. You know what I'm saying? Leveraging that shit. You, know, you don't even need the bread. You know what I'm saying? Learning these lessons early. Fortunate enough for me, I went to prison when I was 16. And, and I say that, you know, in a weird ass way. I was, you know I'm what I'm saying? You said it, I'm glad you said it. I say that in a weird ass way. But I learned so much during that 10 year bid. You know what I'm saying? I learned so much during that. Yeah. And it's, I, didn't, I wasn't able to mess my credit up and blow my credit. You know what I'm saying? So I came home, I was able to just start building. You know what I'm saying? Taking that time, understanding that wealth take time. Right. right, but we always on defense, right? We always on defense. So when we start playing offense, we start saying, okay, how do I leverage the bank? How do I make the bank work for me? How do I make them stocks work for me? How do I use this brain of mine that I was in the streets hustling with because the streets taught me how to be an investor. Yeah, By, man, if you, you know sell, what I'm saying? If you can you hustle can invest in the streets, 100%. you can run anything. You can run anything. Thing. And I use that to build my brand and build my business. Yeah, so, that's, we got to use better words. Cause it's a whole bunch of motherfuckers out here who don't even know they got a whole dope ass resume from 100%. selling dope. Mm -hmm. yeah. 100. You but just got to translate that shit to you know it, corporate it, language. You know what's crazy is like we got a loyal, loyal support base in jails all across America. 100. And it's like they're interested in business. They just went about it a lot of times the wrong way. Of course, it wasn't introduced <clears> to them the correct way. So now it's like. You're like, damn, I can actually make this money just having vending machines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, you simple. know what I'm saying? Right. Simple. Right. Right. Getting simple. a mobile home. Or, simple. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's simple. like, nobody really explained that. Once you get to play, you still got the same mechanics in your brain like you. Like, you know what I'm saying? You, you transition from the streets to, it's, it's a different game, but you still using the same 100%. mechanics. <clears throat> yeah, I know. Because the next business I start going to be with lace fronts and eyelashes. Billion, billion dollar industry. <laughs> Laugh if you want to. I'm going to find I some kind of way to be selling these yourself. lace fronts. Yeah, In Atlanta. These crazy. lace fronts be $3,000, man. That's a fact. Yeah. And they need them. The they need them. The like, not, not, like, they need them. Like, yo, I, I don't see like, them. The demand. I need the He's saying the demand is there. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, nah, nah, not that they need them, need them. No, yeah, it's like they need me to dig them. They need to start having no feet out here. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Blue Magic could have been made easily. Clean it up. 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 I'm getting in the industry. Like you said, that's a trillion dollar. It's media trading right there. I love that, man. He cleaned it up. Travis Smiley, I see it. You just dying to expose who I really am. You want to. These motherfuckers to think that I went to school and got a, a media degree, and you want them to think I'm financially well off, and you want them to think I robbed their ass if I fall off. That's a fact. That's what the trap fuck, man. I don't read them people's skin. You gotta learn how to read the room, man. <laughs> nah, that's a fact, man. But, but here's another thing, too, though. Once you become financially literate, your whole life changes. You'll never see the world the same. You'll never see the world the same. You'll never see money the same. You never see business the same. And then you know whatever you want to reach, that shit is attainable. That's why I'm going to be successful in the wig business, because of my research department. This is what you call networking. <laughs> that was that fast? Oh, yeah, because in two, he did not only bring me the current up-to-date number, he let me know that 2016 was the peak of the wig market, and it made $192 million on wigs just in the United States man, pay that alone. Man. Pay that man, man. Shout out to the research department. <laughs> Shout out to research. the research team. I just want research $2 million a year off, off of hair products. And, That's a fact. Yeah. That's we, another we, thing. We interview yeah. somebody. Multiple streams. Yeah. That's Juke, the, Juke, Drew Bernard, he went to the, the hair weed fact. capital of the world, India. India, yep. Mm -hmm. um, what, what part of India? I forgot. He went out, he's like Frank Lucas. Now he's a guy from Brooklyn that was down on his luck, he lost everything. He said, you know what, what do I do? He went to India, got bundles straight from the source, 
came like, back off their heads. Like I want hers, hers, and hers. <laughs> basically, <laughs> basically, that's what happened. And he still, he had the number one um, hair product in, in New York for like five years running. That's yeah. the, the crazy part is like the way that you're thinking about having a business. Our community isn't. We're just consumers of it. You know what I'm saying? So if you even look at who who owns the stores. Not here in Atlanta, but definitely where we at in New York. We got like, too many haters in the community. I ain't mean to cut you off, yeah. but it just sparked it in me. There's so many haters in the community talking people out of their dreams and making them believe that it's not possible. It's like, man, because yeah. everybody, I, always, I said it on him before, people hate the start. The start is ugly when you got to be hustling out your crib and you got to lay your, lay your last five wigs down and be like, fuck with it, cuz. Oh, excuse me, little weed, man. I know, I know, I know. I know I'm unprofessional and fuck, right? But this real shit. Right. Like, your I dream got to be started somewhere. Nah, bro, my bad. Excuse the little nah, weed. I see, I see the five weeks. You want to get down when I, I knock it off for the little weed? My bad. <laughs> I know I'm unprofessional, but fuck it's with okay. me right, right, okay. right quick. You got to start, though. Exactly. The, the I best, started my job. The best job, way to would. kill a big idea is introduce it to a small mom. Shout out to my man, Neo. Neo. <laughs> Neo. Shout Woo. out to Neo. Neo. That motherfucker just. Yeah. <laughs> The yeah. way that bitch walked around the room. That's, that's real. That's real talk. Bro. That's real. Yeah, I started everybody, my brand everybody with two not gonna e-books, get it, bro. Yeah, they're gonna kill it. I started what? my brand with two ebooks, a ten dollar ebook and a twelve dollar ebook, yo. And I ain't stopped. You know, you just you gotta the starting point is is difficult. No matter it is, you trying to start learning to invest. One of the questions people always ask is, how much I start with? Man, I start with what you got. Mm-hmm. Start there. Like don't you don't gotta have this big number in your head, like start where you at, you build it. You don't build a house all at once, you build that shit brick by brick. You know what I'm saying? So start where you at and build on it. Like tell yourself, you know, every time I get paid, I'm gonna put $10 up. See, somebody started a fucking business building houses all at once. He heard what you just said and was like, bullshit. (laughs) (laughs) It's a one piece shit up. <laughs> but he still had to start piece it's, by piece. But exactly. But even when he said, "Man, I'm gonna start building houses all together," man, that's a dumbass idea. Watch, Watch and me. see. Watch <laughs> me. Yeah. So you start the like that's how you get it. Like yeah. that financial freedom, that time equity, only your 24 hours. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, like that's that. important to me. Like it ain't for me. It's not even about the money. You know what I'm saying? For me, it's about like, I want to own my 24 hours. Like, I want to be able to do whatever I need to do, when I need to do, how I need to do it. And then I want my daughter to own her 24 hours. So she ain't under no pressure. You know what I'm saying? Like, owning your 24 hours, that's, that's the real that's, freedom. That's it. That's it. Like, you, you know never, what I'm saying? Never. The money, you're going you gonna to blow some money, you're going to make some money, you're going to blow that shit again. But your time, I'll never get them 10 years back. So I got to make every other 10 years count. So how do I do that? Every investment I make, that shit got to buy some more time for me. What? Yeah. Hell yeah. You know what, what year saying? was you in there? From 99 to 2007. Oh, that was the best years. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Listen, listen to me, though. Listen Damn. to me. The high boys went crazy. No, I was in jail going crazy. Boy, boy. Cash money went crazy. <laughs> hey, nigga, who's on the streets in the 99 to 2000? I was mad. I was mad. We weren't worried about no financial freedom, nigga. We from two for 99. Boy, and then you get the two for 89, nigga, what? I was mad. We were just wearing white t shirts all summer. Nigga, we was financially free. Gas was 99 cents That's a, a fact. gallon, nigga. Jabot, fact. Jabot, nigga, the big Jabot. ball of coke, this shit was a dollar. Listen, you got your reads on your feet. A dollar, Jabot. nigga. You got the reads on your feet. Nigga. With your balls. Nigga. Soldier, Come pod. on, bro. <laughs> nigga, with the four goals. I just took mine out. Oh. <laughs> nigga. <laughs> Nigga, nah, bro, up. I'm talking about we was nothing in bitches every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, the club was closing at five, six, seven in the morning. Waffle House. I'm talking about we was nothing in bitches. We went to school with. We was getting head all in the club. <laughs> nigga, <laughs> Pimp C had some shit out. Ooh, Pimp was talking that shit. Ooh. Smoking loud in my cup. Man. Yeah, people talking that talk. Boy, I hate you, Mr. 99. Yeah, Just mad. know, your the boy get And it was the summer. It was the summer. We a little bit. Ooh. Nigga, we had Ooh. money. Yeah. Yeah, I was mad about that. I ain't gonna even lie. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> no, nigga, we letting them pounds go for 700. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, though, he was taxing you, dog. Nigga, I'm telling you, bro. Got it from South but 50. that was to the, to the dough. And that was Reggie, too. Nigga, it was. I be telling people this, too, though, I ain't gonna lie. They be talking about they been smoking, I'm like, you lying, because I came home in 2008, 2007, y'all was smoking Reggie, fam. I remember that. It wasn't me. Don't say me. <laughs> Your stories always say me. Bro, I remember that. And you came home and when? 2007. See, I know you lying on me. No, you was smoking Because I stopped smoking mid in 2005. To go to what? 
It was better shit. So you were thinking about it? I was thinking about it. Don't let me catch you wrong on this show, though. I'm not lying. <laughs> nigga, you can ask Clayton English. When I moved, Ooh, to, Atlanta, when I moved to Atlanta in okay. 2005, me and this nigga used to ride from Kennesaw mm. to the city to get purple in 2005. I know what the fuck Talk I was shit. smoking on. Talk now, in 2008 is when my son was born, <laughs> and I did goddamn buy some mid. And so that was the last time I bought some mid was in 2008, and I put that on everything because I remember my son. Son was a baby. He was at my house, and I had ran out the back door because the nigga on the next building had a little meat. He was like, "Lo, I know we be smoking loud, but if you buy this little bit of meat from me, I'm gonna get you straight when the loud come back in." And I was like, "He was like, come on, bro, I, this is my land, little bit before I go get some more." I remember that. that I was no, don't I try me now. Now I started selling perp like an old nine, bro. So. Nigga, it, I was in the city of Atlanta. That okay. was perp right downtown. But the blunts was $20 a piece. That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> and me and Clay used to ride all the way down here. A grand for $20. Then and then we'll put eyes together. And then we had like a nice, that's, that's how we fact. became friends friends. That's a fact. Because I was fact. like, nigga, I don't smoke me. And he was like, I don't smoke me neither. And then I was like, well, we got to do something. <laughs> this is a shit. We got to put $20 worth of gas in this bitch. Because that summer, the 05, that was when Bush was the president and the he gas, they had the gas the prices gas, that summer. Gas Niggas ain't know up. what we was gonna gas do. Gas prices went up in 05. Boy, you should have never brought up 99 and 2000. Was I'm talking about it was I so was many ho thick hoes on the street. Bitches had no limit tanks tattooed. Ooh. Listen, so I had came to Atlanta in 96. You remember the shit? Street, bro. You was in New York. Y'all yeah, probably yeah, wasn't lit yet. Y'all totally wasn't lit. I came to Atlanta in 96. No, the Rough was out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I missed the tour. That was a cold sunk, bro. The Cash Money Rough Riders tour. I just missed the tour. Yeah, I just missed it. I went. I went. That's Tell them that shit was crazy. You know what's crazy about the Rough Rider Cash Money tour? You know who opened up before the lights came on? I don't know. I was in prison. 50, 50 Cent. Before the lights came on, 50 was out with 10 people watching. Mm. What did he say? That's when he was on, what was it? Um, Ghetto Quran, How to Rob. How to Rob. How to Rob. The shit that got him shot. That yeah. was, that was, that was 2000. <laughs> How to rob. He that missed 2000. He was it. in the yeah. system in 2000. I was in the system. That was your, I remember it was your, your birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nigga, you missed Velour Fat Farm the suits. Iceberg. Iceberg. Sean, 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 Sean. I was mad. I was getting one. pictures. My pops used to send me pictures from Mardi Gras. I used to be mad. Boy, you ain't even get to go in there and buy two prior Air Force One. No. <laughs> I missed the whole who, two-way major era. You, were you from Mississippi? Yeah. Who's the strongest from that era? Who's the strongest from the South? David, oh, from uh -uh. the South? From, from the, from the 99, 2000. Like that oh. era, like that 2000. Cash money. Uh, no, nah. Nah, 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 it was, they was. I'm going to tell you what, what had, where everybody, and I'm from North Mississippi, close uh. to Memphis, so we all, like that, that was when Project Pat came mm. out and dropped that goddamn ooh, ooh, Get chicken, It Green. Chicken, ooh, ooh, and he dropped that. Chicken, Ballers, ooh, we be on balls, some twinkies, twinkies. Play ahead and get found, stank it, stank it. That was that shit in Juvenile. juvenile. I'm about to say, but Cash Money still is the hot. But, but I'm, I'm saying Juvenile. Like, I'm talking about like mid to In that area. Cause like, like, mid, for, for, for New so York. So 36 Mafia was still popping. From, yeah, yeah. They had just got the big deal. Yeah. Cause New York during that era, everybody gonna say G Unit 50 Cent, but I never seen anything like Dipset. You never seen mm. so many bandanas and pink colors, yo, and shirts. And when they came out, Dipset man, it was different. Love different. It. I love that era that was too. My, man. I was in prison, bro. I know. That's why we trying to let you know. I'm feeling shit it. was hard. <laughs> I'm talking about in a good way. Niggas was balling. Niggas yeah, was I saw that shit. like a motherfucker. I saw bro. that shit. Why I get them pictures. My bitch. partners did used to send me pictures. I'd be like, yo, this shit lit out here. No, I'm talking about all the bitches had clear skin. <laughs> <laughs> it was some, bro. In 99, 2000, some beautiful motherfuckers on the street. I don't know what happened to them. But man, I'm talking about we had, that was a good year, bro. It was some beautiful black women out here in the nine, nine and they was all twerking. This was before twerking was called twerking. And poppin'. twerking, only dope boys used to twerk. It's called popping. Like, I gotta run down the street and twerk something real quick yeah. and I'll be back. It was, it was, that was a street move. It was move. called popping. And then twerking yeah. somehow yeah. got yeah. into the street. And yeah. now twerking is a dance poppin'. move. Twerking used to be some uh, whole street yeah. shit. Yeah, it was popping. Pussy Damn. popping to be exact. On the handstand. <laughs> On the handstand. Damn. <laughs> Some new all that shit. Pussy she popping. can earn a lot of revenue doing that. Support black business. Shout That's a good investment. Blue, blue flame. Killer yeah. Mike. Yeah. Shout out to Killer Mike. Stay right here. We got him. I love the flame. Ain't nothing support. like the flame. That's part of the Atlanta economy. Yeah. Uh, staple. Sure. Staple. Yeah. It's definitely. Because if you can meet the right stripper, that could turn you on to a whole new network. You know what's crazy? Shout out to Killer Mike. We interviewed him. He said that's when he first realized, because you know he got that bank, um, Greenwood. Greenwood. Yeah. He said he first realized about Cash App, PayPal, Digital, 
in the strip club. Yeah. When he, um, he saw a stripper getting tipped. Get a cash and out. And he was like, yo, with he with the no money. money. And she cash like, she showed up, she's like, what the fuck is cash app? And then that opened his eyes. To they got it on the heels now. In the strip club, cash app and strippers, nigga, you lame as a <laughs> motherfucker. You are a fucking lame, and you are not on the streets in the nine nine and two thousand. That's a fact. That's how I know. That's you new fact. niggas, y'all fucking disgust me. <laughs> Ooh, I can't stand you. I hope y'all don't never get financially free. <laughs> Bro, you can't Ooh. see them. Ooh. That's a fact. I hope you stay in you take bondage. Away from the experience when you do that. Slave to the materialistic <laughs> bullshit. You can't, you can't throw the cash out. You take, you take away from the experience if you cash out. No. You, don't, you, don't, you don't agree with that? I don't agree with the cash out. Damn. You got to go that's get the ones, man. Straight old school? Old school. That's, I, that's, I live by them old school that's rules, like, man. That's COVID regulations. Yeah, man. You got to do that, out. man. Well, I believe that's why they started moving to the cash app, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. COVID regulations. Yeah, that's yeah. only because of that. Because money's so nasty. Money's nasty. Money nasty. Money nasty. Money nasty. I mean, it's been nasty, but now you just know it's nasty. Yes, it's going to be even. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to take it. 100%. I, would, I would much rather, if I had to do it that way, I would much rather catch it on some money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I, I, I mean, like it's shit. either that or a stripper titty. <laughs> now, I know you, uh, listen, I know you love titty. I'm just saying, what, what would you, like, say for instance, you accidentally got the shit off a of stripper titty, but you could have accidentally got it off some money that you came up on. Money, hey, that's all I'm saying. You'd rather get COVID off money than a stripper titty? Why? Why? Because it's the lesser of the two <laughs> evils. Is it a stripper titty? You want to? I mean, if you had to pick between I'm, money and a stripper titty, like you, like, you, you would want to be. Like, I mean, not but like one dollar experience. Been, like you have, like you know, what I'm saying, like we was in a strip club. You didn't touch the bra, bro. Bro, well, this is actually. A, <laughs> you know, I felt extremely uncomfortable. In <laughs> I took him to the flame. Yeah. Yo, yeah, you took me to the flame. Like, this is the crazy. You fucked up. You fucked up some financials in that. That nigga dipped into it. You know you dipped into your portfolio. We got. We got. We got to tell you. So first, you wrote it off. We from. We from. We from New York, right? So shout out to Blue Flame. But, you know, that's so mad. That's different. Nah, that's different. We gotta see him. We have to see him. No, nah, we gotta see him. That's different. Nah, that's, that's like a horror movie. So we we always heard about we always heard about Magic City. So I never been to Magic City. So trap. He like yo, I'm taking to Magic City. So I'm like, all right, cool. So we driving. My man Mike lives in Atlanta. So he like yo, this ain't really the way to Magic City. And I'm I don't really know where we're at. But I'm like, okay, so I see this, and I see the blue flame. I'm like, did they change the name? Like, so I, I'm like, he's like, no, don't worry about it. We good. I like, thought about right. the experience. Yo, I seen this dude running with no shirt on, like a, a fullback, and he dived. Over dive. the rail. I said, yo, trap, yeah. man. I can't. <laughs> he said, I'm going. <laughs> yeah. I said, man, come so back. I, walk, I said, walking back to the car. I said, man, come back. But not when, when he started walking back, he did a flip. Then he did a flip oh, to the car. Nah, like, I don't know if this, like, this is the what best. They serving in there? This is the best place for me. I, I, say, I say, that's letting you know the night going to be good. That's how I know. He going to find the most hood yeah. shit that we can, he can get us into. And he's like, nah, we good here. I'm looking like, oh, nah, we're really not good here. It was like trying to be tricked. Like, nah, we good. Come on. Them New Orleans niggas. Exactly. Tell me. He was right at home. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm like, yo, I'm out. After the hour, like, I'm out. He, he's like, nah, I'm a DFP. <laughs> shout out to the flame, man. Shout out to, like shout out to the flame, man. I took my partner in there. That nigga had the time of his life. I'm telling he you, He loved man. thick chicks, so I had found the thickest one in there, and that nigga had ordered the seafood. <laughs> so the nigga was type. getting the lap dance in, in the corner, eating the seafood like this. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, but he was still getting the dance from the chick, but the nigga was eating it. Nah, I will say this. I will say this. I'm like, bro, bro, stop dancing. They're going to throw you out. You can't. He's like, nah, the bitch dance with me. I'm like, nah, don't dance back. Just stand there, nigga. Because I don't want to be the nigga who brought the dancing ass nigga to the strip club. <laughs> We bring our partner Matt. Yeah, Matt had a good time. It's so funny to take a nigga from out of town to the Atlanta strip club. But he's like, bro, this bitch like me. No, bro. There's always one of them. No, 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 no. There's always one of them. There's always one of them. There's always one of them. She like me. Give me some money. No, nigga, this bitch don't like you. She don't like you, my nigga. my Bro, we got to start letting our niggas know before we get out of the car. Look. She does not like any <laughs> off the rip, off the rip, off the rip. Yeah, that's Don't fall in love with him. Nah, I used to host a lot of shit at the strip club, man. I actually used to do like comedy nights and shit. All the strippers would come out the back, they'll count their money up and we'll just do the comedy show. If they liked you, they'd throw money on you. 
They threw money they threw at money you? At you? Yeah, they like your joke. <laughs> Yo, that's, that's different. Like, why are you up on stage? Like, they, they if they like you. <laughs> so look, we got the crap. We got the comedy show in the strip club. <laughs> Okay. So we bring the comedians out, right? Okay. So if they like you as a comedian, they, they just start making it rain on you. They in the strip club. That's what. So they the was. strippers is making it rain on you sometimes. So you gotta pick the. There was strippers the and, and people at the show. Did you you were, like? Nah, you had, you had to sleep. You had to sleep. Nah, you kill it. They're like, nigga, you stupid. And the strippers like, ah. Would you take? <laughs> would you take like, cash? Very much. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 bring, this, bring this next nigga to the <laughs> no, no place was there. Well, that's, that's a fact. It's facts, man. I had the craziest night in Atlanta. I used to have the camel toe contest. Oh, okay. Yeah, we could just have like ladies in the audience and be like, I got a fat pussy. Get in the camel toe contest. <laughs> the winner got $500. Terrible financial like, decision. <laughs> New face was there. He probably still got the flyer and shit. <laughs> stimulate, stimulate Bro, we had a lot of shit going on. I'm talking about my yeah, comedy grind been crazy. Guy. Hey man, it's your boy Clayton English. And the return that y'all all been waiting for in the MMA is here. It's here right now. One of the MMA's most notorious stars is stepping back into the octagon this Saturday. And DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the UFC, is giving you a free shot at huge cash prizes. For this weekend's fight, DraftKings is offering new players a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes with first deposit. DraftKings is a safe, secure, and reliable, so you can deposit and withdraw your funds at your convenience. So, there's millions of dollars out there. If you think you know who gonna whoop somebody's ass, this is your time. Like, like you've been doing it your whole life. You knew who was gonna win which fight. You saw it. You was like, oh, that bitch is about to get her ass whooped. Can you do that now when there's money on the line? It's, it's putting your skills to the test is what we are saying. And if you haven't tried it yet, it's basically what you've been doing. Fantasy MMA is easy to play. You pick six fighters, stay under the salary cap, and you just pile up the points. You get points for advances, takedowns, and more shit. You know what I'm saying? If, if you run up off the fence and kick a motherfucker in the face, I'm sure it's some more money to be made off that. Because that shit is rare, but that shit is sweet. When a motherfucker run up the wall and kick you with a foot, look, there's no better way to test your MMA knowledge. You think you know about the fighters? Then prove it right now. And don't forget football playoffs where DraftKings has even more money up for grabs this weekend. So you can cover all your bases. Download the DraftKings app now and use promo code 85SOUTH to get a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes throughout the weekend. That's promo code 85SOUTH to get a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. Only at DraftKings. Minimum $5 deposit Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Hey, what's up? It's your man Carlos Miller. I would just like to thank the good folks over there at Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. They sponsored this podcast and they gave us a special promo code for all of our listeners who can, you know, benefit from a little extra confidence where it counts. It's BlueChew.com. Use the promo code 85SOUTH. Blue Chew brings you the first chewable with the same FDA approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. So yeah, you need to get over there to the bluechew.com. Blue Chew is prescribed online by licensed physicians, so you don't have to go to the doctor's office or wait in line at the pharmacy, and it ships right to your door in a discreet package. You know, go use that promo code. Use the promo code. 85 South Bluetooth. You better go over there, man. I'm telling you. It's changing the world. It's prolific like that. <laughs> support black businesses. From day one. Pushing the economy yeah. from day one. You know, if you want to really support the black business, uh, support the bathroom, man. That's the hustling oh, in this yeah, nigga. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I don't know, like, in times like this, I don't know, because, you know, the world shut down. But the bathroom man used to be one of the most hustling in this nigga. They got DVDs and <laughs> Candy and Gum. shit. Like, oh, nigga, you got yeah. perfume. The, uh, the cologne joint. The, the oils, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Ready? No, no. <laughs> Niggas used to be hustling. I support no. all black business, though. All, I support the black weed, man. Uh, people who cut hair and do hair at their house. How you feel about the water boys? Shit. Some of them motherfuckers. <laughs> some of them niggas is grown. <laughs> if you got a tattoo, you can't be a water boy. 
you are a water man at this point. <laughs> and you should be selling water at the Falcons game, not... I actually want to go teach them something, man. I, man, Yo, that's, that's the thing practice, about man. it. I'm going to go teach them something. See, they got the little boys who sell water, they're getting a bad rap. Because there's some niggas out there yeah. selling water, too. <laughs> there's some young niggas that look like boys. They got tattoos and gunshots and shit. Yeah. OG four with me, they shot me. Who? 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 Man, what's that you listen to? Do? Give me a CD. Man, oh, look. Hey, whoa. Y'all niggas. <laughs> Why is he opening my back door? <laughs> <laughs> nigga. <laughs> These niggas get in the car. Just run me up to the next light. <laughs> no. No, get out of my car. Uh, Yo, we got one. Man, we got one. The fuck out of my shit. Yo, no, it's not. Nah, that's, yeah, it's, it's man, you look up, it'd be five little niggas in the car with you. Come on, man, just take us up the street. I ain't never rode in one of these, man. It'd be clean. Well, y'all, boy, doing it on that 85 South. What do you see it? What, you don't get the fuck out of my car? Oh, man. man, this is crazy, because you asked about the water, boy. I was coming down goddamn Campbellton Road one day. I had bought some fruit from, from the nigga at the light. And then the little water boy, and they were like, oh, just give me one of them pineapples. I just had to give, I was like, damn, I should just pass that shit through the one. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have never asked me about them no, niggas. I done got too many experiences. We, we was like, yo, let's give them some money. No, they robbed us. No, they robbed us. <laughs> no, I know you think, don't, don't think you're going to get no change. Yeah, that little boy like, sold me two water for $20. <laughs> That's the crazy thing. Hey, man, let me go and drink these motherfuckers before I get mad. <laughs> Exact same. Oh, nah, yeah, nah, they yeah, running with the one. If you, and if you buy one from one, the other two, like, you'll get this one from me too. Don't buy, look, let me tell you how you know them niggas out there getting money. Don't buy one. <laughs> Don't buy one. <laughs> Don't buy one. You're going to see them niggas in your rearview mirror like this. Yeah, four niggas got money, boy. <laughs> I got plenty one, nigga. Them niggas got a pocket full of money. Every last one of them. I'm going to go pull up on them. I think about getting a sprinter, man. And, okay. uh, yeah, go and teach him some shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go teach him some shit. Cause if you teach him how to put business together, you teach him how to invest their money. That's the thing. Like, you know they're aggressive because niggas trying to get money. Yeah. Niggas trying to get money, man. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm, I'm really politicking on that, man. That's not bad. Dude. Yeah, man. I'm gonna give me a sprinter, man. Don't go out there by yourself. No, but I ain't gonna. Nah. I mean, I ain't, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, we all we always at that point at one point. At some point, you know what I'm saying? Well, we just trying to get it. We trying to get it out the mud. Yo, like, I remember motherfuckers just being scared of me. You know what I'm saying? So, you, that was it, right, though. Yo, ass. <laughs> you, you, robbing, <laughs> you was robbing niggas. Nah, but you know what I'm saying? So, and like, why you helping all them little niggas up that one nigga? Hey, bro, that little nigga. But here's the thing, though. Somebody got to speak the language. That's the thing. True. If nobody never speak the language, then how we going to expect them to do something different? I can see it now. You pull yeah. up in the spring, man. Get your puss ass shit. Yeah, that's man. a fact. <laughs> got mine on me too, little nigga. <laughs> <laughs> all y'all. All y'all. Get in here. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I was you thinking about that. You want to invest in your future? <laughs> hey, <laughs> you don't do little Atlanta nigga different. Hey, OG, no disrespect or nothing, but man, you on some other shit right now, bro. <laughs> no, no bro, you on some whole nother other shit. shit. How the fuck I'ma invest the money I ain't made yet, y'all? <laughs> the fuck is you talking about, man? This man talking about save your money. Man, you don't get the fuck off, man. I'm gonna go to Green Bride, man. Them Jay came out this morning. Fuck you talking about? Goof ass, stupid ass, lame man. You heard that? <laughs> Better take that shit and make it over there, bro. These goddamn zone sick. That's a fact. That's a fact. Man, I'm trying to hear that weak ass shit, man. I ain't saving shit, bro. I don't get fresh tonight. You heard that? <laughs> As a fact. Man, that's a whole nother element of it, though. It's like, yeah. niggas being such a hurry to live. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're under tremendous pressure. Yeah. We don't understand the importance, man. We're going to be here, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We're going to be here. We got time. But, you know, we're just playing defense so much. I know. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? we just playing defense. All we know is defense. All we know is back against the wall. Nobody don't tell us how to come up off the wall, how to attack life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we always worrying about what the fuck life going to throw at us and stuff. I'm like, I'm going to throw some punches at that bitch back, see how that bitch going to react. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, you know, somebody got to teach us offense. So that's kind of the, you know, just to bring it back. That's what we teach them, man. We teaching us how to play offense at this thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? On, on all levels. You know what I'm saying? Once we start playing offense, and like I heard the king, man, I don't, don't want to say his name, Skategoat Jones. That's what he said. When we all come together, we look at other cultures. Like, they come together. They understand the power of them being together. Yeah, because they know community without the unity. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's that shit. Oh, that shit was heaven. That's that shit. shit. I felt it. I think you've been waiting for the right time to put that Ooh, out there. Yeah. You said, I gotta talk about it. That bitch was heaven. Merch it. Merch that. Oh, that's a fact. Chad. Merchant. <laughs> yeah, but, but that's it, man. Just playing momentous. Office, momentous. I told you, like, anytime y'all come in here, the, the atmosphere is always right. Y'all bring Fact. good spirits. It's the good healing money spirit walking through this motherfucker. I feel it. <laughs> Everybody going to be financially independent here in a minute. That's a fact. You're goddamn right. Lo, speaking of money, they got billionaire Mark Cuban on. I want to hear some of that shit. Yeah, they've they been chopping it up with all the important people. <laughs> Martin, Mark Cuban I already well guys we're going to set it up and all I believe in what you got going on <laughs> Kat I was watching you say y'all was talking to Mark Cuban yeah, yeah shout out to Mark Cuban man super cool dude and uh, you know that just gave me a whole different level of motivation because it's like this dude's worth 4.2 billion dollars and we asked him like how, how often do you do you spend educating yourself he said all day I buy online courses I read books I go to classes and he already got $4 billion. So it's like for him to buy online courses and to educate himself, and it's like, you know, you might be struggling, and you like, nah, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't trying to read this book. I don't know who the hell he bought a course from. I'm, I, that's, I want that bitch too. Damn. <laughs> facts. <laughs> he might be University. He might be University. He's a, a we dropped guy. something called a wealth pack, though. Oh, that's a fact. We Blue dropped something called a wealth pack. Blue magic of the investment world, man. It's a fact. I'm about to drop one. What you gonna draw? Like, it's just gonna be me talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't have shit. That's a fact. I still ain't got shit. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to get. Some but shit. I'm about to show you why you don't. <laughs> You're probably making the same mistakes I was making. <laughs> <laughs> out here believing these bitches and 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 and, and 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 running in and out the convenience store all day, inconveniencing yourself. <laughs> They should call it the inconvenience. The inconvenience yeah, you're running in and out of there all day. That's a fact. Fuck Jimmy. Fuck <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> Every day. We on day 67. <laughs> Fuck Jimmy. Uh. Ain't that just crazy though how that story is? $3 million gas station just sitting in the middle of the hood. That's crazy. Man, that shit run a light in my head. I went to them and was like, yo, we need to buy a gas station. Yeah, why not? Let me find a way to leverage to get a gas station. Yeah. I just, I literally talked to them just now. Like, yo, we, that's some gangster shit. Yeah. Like, it's all about ownership, man. That's why, you know, I love stocks because it's about owning businesses. But, like, once we tap into that ownership, your mind starts registering different. You know what I'm saying? Everything I see, I want to know, like, how can I get that shit? Like, I want to own that shit because I'm at a point in my life where I feel like it ain't nothing I can't do. You know what I'm saying? And once you get there, you start saying, if, if if this person own, like, if I see another black man that look like me own the gas station, shit, that let me know I can own one of them bitches, too. You know what I'm saying? I see another black man. I buy see, one, wouldn't even let nobody know it was a black man. That's cool, too. You own it, I though. just have a whole yeah. bunch of black-ass products in there. That's a fact. <laughs> you do what you want to do. It's yours. You know what I'm saying? That's that's it, man. Yeah. Ownership is key, man. <clears throat> Shout out to 19 Keys. Ownership but a slave ship. You know what I'm saying? Like, ownership is heavy. Once we tap into how powerful that is, man, game changer. Equity is we better than We should do cash. a movie about how some niggas stole a, a slave ship. I'm with that shit. And just sailed off and went to all these different countries just getting bitches and gold, <laughs> elephants and shit. <laughs> no, bro, leave me, bro. I'm staying in Spain, my nigga. <laughs> I'm going to start me some dark-skinned Spaniards over here. <laughs> Where y'all niggas headed? Germany, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you know you gotta turn that motherfucker <laughs> pit eight times. He's gonna be like that, little bitch. Bitch at a college trip. He's gonna be like that, little. I know some slaves stole a boat, nigga. And they ain't gonna tell you about them. Bro, where y'all wanna go? Man, take us back to the hood. Nigga. I don't know if <laughs> Africa back then waver. <laughs> Flip that map upside down, my nigga. Bro, where you learn how to ride a boat, nigga? 
<laughs> Why are you talking like that? I do not know. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that that should be hard. D shit, man. G shit, man. Appreciate you, man, for letting us come through, man. You and the team, man. I always feel like we don't discuss enough shit. I don't know. Well, how y'all feel about the chain shortage? No, that's interesting. <laughs> that's crazy. It's a chain shortage, and she got a text about that. It's a, it's a shortage. Nigga, who the fuck is texting you about the chain shortage? That's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> I we, promise you. So we got that's in the group chat. Yeah, they were like, "Yo, I got." Uh, it's like, gentle, It was Jamal. It's like, gentlemen, want to let you know, it just came from the bank. That was the other day, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, that's so Everybody just came from the bank. They didn't. They didn't have enough ones. They had no hundreds they, left. They, they're short on quarters. <laughs> like, like, why are you trying to get quarters? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, nah, somebody was like, yo, I got a stack of nickels in my closet. Like, should I hold them? Or I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> Y'all got some strange ass friends, man. Nah, that's crazy. Different conversations. Man. But I do know some people that go to the bank and they get a little change and just, you know, put it in there. There's definitely a shortage of change. And a few people have told me they couldn't get enough money out. Um, that's right. Who said, some recent, somebody said, I said that. that was you? Couldn't get a hundred. Ran out of hundreds. Hundreds. Sorry, I said I said quarters. Sounded better. It was a better story with the quarters. These niggas yeah. get y'all get into the paper, <clears throat> bro. Your research yo, team is the best. Yo. That's my guy. Nah, that's my. Uh oh, told you, twenty three year old Robert Smalls. He stole a ship when he was enslaved in eighteen sixty two. Research team, research team. Top the research team. Top the research team. Top the research team. It's a whole department over there, Shout man. Top the research team. Man, they, they I'm telling you. I think they did make a movie about that. Yeah, it's called I'm a Star. I'm a Star. I'm a Star. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah I'm a Star. No. We give us free. But did they steal the ship or they just took over the ship? They took over the ship, is all I'm saying. But they landed, though. In like Great Britain or some yeah. shit and went to court. Went to court. They yeah. didn't actually turn the ship around. Yeah. They jammed I, niggas, the bottom, in my movie, niggas gonna actually take the ship. But they ain't even gonna try to go home. They just like, what the fuck, man? The fight was where they stole a word of cargo. The fight was where they stole a word of cargo. If it was cargo, then they, it was gonna go to the yeah. Spaniards. If it was stolen, then they would have to go. That was a, that was, that was like 97. When that dropped? Yeah, I, 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 yeah. That, was a, that was a field trip for us. Yeah, that was Amistad, some dope shit. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Give us free. Shout out to Amistad. We still fighting for the freedom. We oh, getting better though. We getting close. Making, Dude, a, lot key, of, making a lot of improvements, man. Yeah, yeah. Like what he said, like, it's not the money, it's the freedom. It's dead on, man. Like, I've experienced that over the past, like, two years. It's like, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it to be able to. How much do you think freedom cost back in the day? Back in what day? When you had to buy it. You, ain't even gotta, you still got to buy You got to buy it now. You still got to buy it now. You got to buy it now. But I'm saying, like, when you could actually buy your freedom. You, you, buy it now. you can actually buy your freedom right now. I'm trying to buy how much is it? $10 million. That's how much it goes? My brain. Everybody got a different price. Yeah. Your, so one of the things I ask people is, what's your freedom price? Exactly. What's your freedom price? What is it going to cost for you to own your 24 hours? So bigger than that is like, they should be thinking about that now. Like, if you're what's not your thinking about like, I like that look, low, because you're thinking it's, now. It's the mindset. You, you're thinking right now. What's your freedom price? What's I it always gonna, ask people that. What's it going to take me to walk away from everything? You got to buy your freedom. You, you're you not free unless you can wake up and do whatever you want, live how you want to live, Every day. send your kid. Like, if you're not doing that, technically you're not free. Why y'all talking about my life? Like and the that? system, and, and the crazy part is the system is designed <clears throat> to keep free. you in, in, that, in that space. The system is designed to keep you in that space, right? So that's something I tell people all the time, like, and they be like, well, why they don't teach you that in school? So you gotta ask yourself this. If they taught you that in school, at that point, you would understand how the game is played, right? So the lion doesn't teach the gazelle and the zebra mm -hmm. how to get away. Right, because at that point, then the lion would no longer be at the top of the food chain. Right, it's financial prey, financial predators. I'm not gonna teach you how to be a predator. If you figure it out, then you know, come join the party. You know what I'm saying? So, what does it cost? You know, you won't you won't be caught up in consumerism. Mm -hmm. Then cool, I'll keep you a slave. Right, because I'm gonna always come up with some new shit for you to buy. Mm -hmm. Right, so you're gonna work hard. You're gonna work the one job. You're gonna work the two job. You're gonna scam. You're gonna hustle. Whatever you're gonna do to, to buy, buy this shit. shit. That I drop, right, while you buying this shit, that's cool. I own that shit. Right? So, all right, cool. That's right. why I be wearing this shit so much. That's why I got this shit. Yep. That's why they got this shit, right? Mm -hmm. It's another part They ain't even free. give me none of this shit. No, you, got you. Got no you didn't give me none. No, no, we got it. Got you. I'll buy it. Because I support you. black people. You feel me? Support black business. And then I'm going to complain because I'm black. 
<laughs> you said Nick. Man, my, me and Troy Nick ain't the same size. <laughs> Who Nick they using for? That's how I wore my 85 South hat on our 100th episode. Big fat. We had Dane. We had all of the... <laughs> That's okay. alcohol I, let me oh. just bring some, some kind of liquor over oh, here, man. That's the big What the hell is that? Man, just sit this that's shit. Man. I don't know, man. That's rubber? That's rubber? It's, it's something. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's good. They drink it in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> this is like Ciroc on steroids. Hey, man, we got some Ciroc. We had some Ciroc. <laughs> All the all the good black liquor is going from my yeah, liquor I'm cabinet. Over there like, what is that? Man, I got some more <laughs> shit over there. <laughs> like, is this water or? Nah, man. You why the fuck would it be yeah, water? I've never seen no. You ever seen the bottle before? <laughs> I thought oh. it was a water. Yeah, bro, don't act like we not drink. We drinking <laughs> good over so, here, so bro. It's, it's, I just don't see it. They got the eighty. Yeah, so. we're not giving them no fucking. Oh, yeah. But this not this your liquor. It is because I bought it. Once you buy, you do what you want to do. You fucking right. I That's put a, a peach fact. over there. They know it's just liquor. That's <laughs> it's liquor, niggas. <laughs> And he Who just, goes to promote he just, a brand? He just, he just told my for man, our millions just, of followers just, for nothing. He just told my man, I don't know who buys all the liquor. This is the biggest liquor bottle I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> hey gotta, hey man, the research department provides <laughs> all the booze, <laughs> man. We got our own. I got my own liquor coming out real soon. I'm, I'm a cop that. Hey, them candles, I got my own yak candles, coming. Oh, yeah. You want to talk candles. about it? No, no, I, we, I need no, to talk no, about. No, it. No, we, no, we, I need to talk we about. Got a special moment for that. What? Them, them candles. They special. Yeah. Candles. That's a business. The candles they made? That's a 85. That's right. a spin-off business. Listen, man. Out of revenue. Listen, them candles is different. Best shit I ever had in my house. Yo, if you if you look <laughs> if you look at any episode from 2021, if you watch any Market Mondays, if you look in the back, the candles is up there. Yeah, what man. made you do candle? Where'd you get the candle idea? I, this is some real shit. I fucking love candles. Them shit. Uh, like when I became a grown ass man, I, I just always lit motherfucking some candles and shit and get the shit smelling right and set the vibe. No, that's a vibe. Seller. And then I found the motherfuckers who, who made the candles that I liked. And then I, I hit them directly and I was like, I need that shit. I need that. That shit is And then, shit. you know, it took off from there. Yeah, that shit good. But it's just know. legit. I legit love no candles, nigga. No, I get people. Product, people yeah. send me candles and shit all the time because I, I burn them shit. That's like eight at a time. Yeah. I just order some more. That's a I good. Just order some more. Yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's, that's, good. that's a good. That's a good product. I fucks with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good product. I, got, I was excited. <clears throat> I got, oh, yeah, it's up on the mantle. I yeah. did it. Definitely fine. We'll make sure we send y'all some more shit over there, too. Because you need some good shit burning while you're talking to people like Mark Cuban and shit. So he could be like, what is that smell? <laughs> Keep the sage like Kyrie. Oh, <laughs> Shout out to Kyrie. That shit is up, man. I ain't gonna lie. That was special. I had to tag your whole team. And I, I called yeah. Chad and they were like, yo, this shit is the shit. Yeah. Yeah, we keep those burning at my crib. Yeah, man. Sure. We fucks with it. Definitely. What y'all got coming up here in the future, man? That's gonna be some, you know, some shit that the consumers can put their hand on. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we teamed up with the bro. Of course, everybody, this, this nigga here. Yeah. Man, I'm so proud of this nigga, man. Fuck getting it out of the mud. That nigga got it up out the cell, you heard me? Came out here and fucked the game up, man. That's a whole success story in itself. And I hope you just keep going and you keep propelling and keep gaining more knowledge and, you know, stay on the journey and the path that you've been on. Because whatever, whatever you told yourself while you was in that position you didn't want to be in, definitely put you in the position that you want to be in. So, so keep doing whatever wherever you at in your mind and whatever your process is. Man, just know that that you you radiate. Appreciate that. You get what I'm saying? Big, big, big trap, big trap. Big trap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah nah. So we teamed that. up with the bro. We made a curriculum actually for um, generational wealth, like everything you need to become successful. Investing, how to set your kids up, life insurance. How to invest in minerals, gold, all that stuff. Um, it guarantees your kid being yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So we put it together. It's called the Wealth Pack. So um, blue magic for investing. Right? Shout out yeah, to Wall Street plug. Trapper for working with us on that. We worked with him on that, yeah. and uh, it's like a collaborative group album. Mm -hmm. So shout out to that. That's really shifting the culture. But first and foremost, you know, it's just an honor to anytime we get to kick it with eighty five South man. It's a, it's a vibe, <clears throat> and uh, y'all y'all real down to earth. Real solid. The whole team, man. Yeah. Shout out to Abby. man. Yeah, 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 for sure, man. I appreciate you, brothers, man. Yeah. So, first and foremost, we gotta we gotta acknowledge that. Yeah. And um, yeah, we just you know just keep pushing. That's it. We just we just pushing it. Yeah, I, I gotta give y'all credit, man. As much as we've been like we've been doing it for two years, there's no group of dudes, podcasts, whatever. 
that is showing a small love in y'all. Man, that's because we ain't no haters. <laughs> we fuck with y'all, man, and it's like. I mean, I, mean, I mean, we live in New York, and it took for y'all to come to New York to, for somebody to invite us to something. And so when we got to see y'all like go on stage and perform, I was like, yo, these, these guys are just different levels. And then we kicked it backstage and chopped it up, and it's been cool ever since. And, and even Chad, when he met us the first time, it was like we had just got the flight shot an episode. He just out of nowhere just kicked it with us for like four hours. Yeah, just giving us he shot. weird like that. Yeah, yeah. I would have never kicked it with them niggas. I ain't no yeah, it was four crazy. Hours. He just pulled up and it was like, <laughs> 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 like fucking weird. He like I know y'all was like when this nigga leave him. God damn, Chad, wait, you ain't got shit out to do. We finna um, nah, bro, it's cool. So what you about to do? Though? Nah, <laughs> you gonna crash? <laughs> Niggas is tired, Where you bro. About to go at? <laughs> yeah, it was it was great, like two a.m. to three a.m. in the morning. We were just kicking it, but uh, just spreading love from day one, man. So again, salute to y'all. Um, and so we're gonna do the same thing when we see up and coming people doing that, uh, which is why we created our um, network. Yeah. The AYL network is is a place for creatives that uh, are starting podcasts. And, and I've been telling people, like, I'm, my my push is. Everybody start a podcast. Don't never let nobody talk you out of this shit. We need black voices in in every avenue, man. We need black exactly. cooking shows, black mechanics need shows, black people in college, doctors, everybody need a show, man. They can do it. They and there's enough they for everybody. Do they see y'all do it, they see us do it. So they believe they can do it too. Yeah. So shout we shout out to do. all the podcasters out there. Million all dollars, of them. Million dollars worth of game. Mm -hmm. Joe Buttons. Everybody doing their thing. Brilliant idiots. Yeah, it's yeah. full court pumps. Hold on. Oh, all that shit. Poor minds, horrible decisions. Yeah, horrible decisions. decisions. Horrible decisions. Shout, Shout out to, to Mandy and, and, and Weezy. That's yeah. our people. Shout yeah. Them girls crazy they as fuck. <laughs> Shout out to the bro Dave Shans. Dave Shans. Yeah, Social uh, Proof Podcast. Social Proof Podcast. And shout out to Market Mondays. That's another. Out, he just signed into y'all, right? First person to sign into y'all, yeah, right? Yeah, that's the new Jeff Pro. The new Jeff Pro. And breaking news, like uh, we got Ash Cash inside the vote. We just signed that podcast too, so that's another one. Hey man, yeah, and shout out yeah. to all the black nerd podcasts that think that black people ain't found y'all yet. We hear y'all bitches <laughs> complain. <laughs> so shout out to all the black nerds. Keep that shit going on, man. Yeah. Much love to the. I feel like the black nerds don't get enough motherfucking credit and shit, you know, and all the people behind the cameras and shit and making these podcasts and shit happen man so drop yeah. the social media and everything so yeah yeah earn your leisure you across you, yeah. all social media platforms uh youtube our youtube channel earn your leisure check our podcast out on spotify apple wherever you listen to podcasts and um yeah that's it man keep it simple once again thank you for having us appreciate it and uh yeah trap tell them your your, your, your handles and all that um so it's wall street trapper on youtube I've been putting out some dope stuff out there, actually just paying attention to them. It's just like, yo, you gotta flood it. So now I'm just like dropping shit every day on YouTube. Got that up to like 70,000 people, so that's a blessing. Um, Instagram, wall underscore street underscore trapper. Um, just pushing out dope content on that every day, all day. Um, just educating people, man, on how to just get in this game and play it the right way. Speaking it in our language, though, so people can understand it. Um, I want everybody playing this. Like, I'm, my goal is, my mission is to make this shit like, conversations at the dinner table mm. like in my mind that's the vision like we don't even sit down and have dinner with our kids like that like and i think that's something that's important i heard somebody say i think it was nipsey he said when he went to africa he saw like at a certain time every day like no matter what time it was they would have dinner together right and i think we don't do that. everybody always want to go like with them dinner table them lunch conversations be the conversation where you can really like put some shit together so that's my goal just to make like having that wealth talk having that conversation normal and one of the things that i realized that i'm really doing so every day every sunday i host this live class and i've noticed that parents starting to bring their kids and i just had a little girl i just gifted her five shares of netflix because she broke down why she wanted to invest in netflix at 12 years old yo like that was amazing to have a beautiful brown girl on there with dreadlocks talking about why she won't buy stock in netflix so i bought her five shares of netflix so that's the goal for me man I just make this shit normalized normal. mm -hmm. black well black well matters man Black wealth matters. <laughs> Trademark. Black wealth matters. <laughs> merch it. Merch it. <laughs> Research team, is that, can we get that? <laughs> <laughs> we gotta call the legal department. <laughs> hey, come on, man. Yo. I ain't gonna say it. Hey. Harry, yo, shout out to Harry. Hey, man. Yo. Hey, oh, some real yo. shit. These <laughs> parts been going crazy. <laughs> 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 Nigga. Trump.
That nigga is showing his hands. <laughs> I would have loved. I would have loved to hear that nigga car. say. Free, free, yo, free yo, Bill Capri. Yo, you know what's I so, like Kodak. You know what's so you get crazy? him out of there. Before we ended, like we was in the car riding, and my man Jamal was like, "Yo, you know Trump freed Harry O." And I said, "Yo, did he free Kodak? And did he free um, Lil oh, Wayne? Did he?" And he was like, "Nah, not yet." So that's crazy. We just spoke about that. Yeah. yeah. Shout out. Kwame, you said Kwame. Kill Patrick. That's the Detroit man, right? Detroit man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what's up. At least he did something good on his last day. Yeah. Well, there you have it, folks. Earn your leisure. Earn your 85 South Show. This podcast is for everybody who keep a little bit of money. <laughs> yeah, we'll catch it on the flip. We out this bitch. That's crazy. I just asked about that shit. What up, Jake? Cooling. Hey man, this y'all would tell me about this product after I've already went bald. So apparently they got this website. You go online and go to keeps.com slash 85 self show and they will send you monthly hair loss prevention medication. Like it's approved by the FDA and everything. They got like a hundred thousand men that do this every month. Bruh, if I would have heard about this before I was all the way bald, I could have saved at least the front part of my hairline. So they saying the whole thing about like keeping your hair is preventative maintenance or like prevention. So go to keeps.com, use my promo code so you can get your first month free. You never know. Go to keeps.com slash 85 South Show so you can save your hairline and your roof part because your roof will fall out. Trust me, my roof fell out. But this was before Keeps.com was around. But if they would have been around while I had my roof, I wouldn't be roofless right now. I'm signing the roofless records <laughs> when it comes to the hair. I don't want you to be like me. I want you to be able to keep talking about how bald I am because you got all your hair. So go to Keeps.com and, and nobody will ever know. They deliver the medicine right to your crib and you don't even have to go nowhere. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to Keeps.com slash 85 South to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash 85 South. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash 85 South. You don't got to go to the doctor, no pharmacy, nothing. Straight to the crib. Hairline juice. Use that. I'm telling you, all right, it works. <laughs>